It's no secret at all that I couldn't do this channel if it wasn't for support from you, my subscriber base, and my Patreon donors. If you'd like to join this community by pledging a dollar or more per month, go check out the link in the description below. And I thank you. Hey, it's Comic Artist Pro Secrets, and I'm Ethan Van Skyver, and uh, I want to do something a little bit different today. Um, this is going to be um, kind of a secret commentary track, but in a way... It's also just uh, to talk to you about something that kind of happened in the 90s and then fizzled out and disappeared last decade. And it's a shame because I used to love these. These are ash cans. And we talked about them a little bit uh, last night. I pulled out um, uh, this, the Salamandroid ash can. Um, even though this technically doesn't strictly fit the definition of an ash can because it is kind of exclusive material almost entirely, um, it's still... Is small like an ash can it has a nice stiff cover like an ash can and uh, for some reason despite the fact that uh, these um, are much smaller than a comic book and don't contain as many not nearly as many pages as a comic book usually 10 or 15 pages um, these used to be prized and a lot more expensive than an actual comic book because they were rare I mean they were they were meant to sort of preview and give a flavor uh, to something that was um, that was coming soon um, and here I, I have four of them. I just I found these on eBay. I wanted to get another copy of Cyberfrog Number Zero, the ash can, uh, and I, these three other ash cans basically came with it, and I thought that was super cool. Um, uh, this one especially, because <laughs> this is the perfect definition of what I was talking about when it comes to 1990s ash cans. So at the time, and uh, this is probably 1992 or three. Um, these books were so anticipated. Dale Keown doing a, a, a new issue of Pitt uh, was such a big deal. Uh, he was one of my favorite artists um, from the Image uh, launch. Actually, he was kind of the second wave of Image uh, artists. The first wave kind of Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, Rob Liefeld, um, and those guys. They, um, Jim Valentino, Eric Larson, and Wills Portacio. They started Image, um, and then they gradually began to pull other artists away from Marvel, only the big name artists. And they tried to get writers too, but for the most part, writers seemed really resistant um, to joining them uh, over at Image, which everyone kind of perceived, rightly so, to be an artist-driven um, industry or an artist-driven uh, company. Um, you know, uh, there was this perception that the artists over there just felt like they could write, and... Um, uh, you know, they weren't very good writers for the most part, but they did it anyway. And, oh, my God, they're dragging comics down. Nonsense. They were doing great stuff. Those books were so fun. And look how cool this is. Look at the lighting here on the musculature. I, I could still just look at this. And it's so dated. Um, it is so 90s, just this idea of just sort of, you know, graduating lines here like this and creating this kind of metallic effect on every single uh, muscle. Um uh, but it was something that Dale Keown kind of did, and he did really, really well. Uh, this looks like Scott Williams inked it. Um, so this is a freebie in Hero Magazine. This is another thing. Wizard Magazine was so popular, there were other magazines that tried to uh, imitate it, and Hero Illustrated was one. There was one called Overstreet's Fan, and they were all, I mean, you bought them all when you went out to get comics. Uh, you know, Hero and Overstreet Fan didn't really last as long. Um, but still, it was so, I mean, they just, the content wasn't as fun. Uh, but they were just so great. And, I, you know, I must have looked at this uh, ash can here in black and white because, uh, you know, when you're a comic book artist yourself and your job is basically to produce black and white artwork, the color kind of gets in the way sometimes and you just want to see it stripped down um, so that you can just see the lines uh, and know what your work is meant to look like. Um, I must have looked at this a hundred thousand times. Uh, this really, really meant a lot to me. Um, and it's just so good. I mean, it's still just so good. Look at this dog. Dale Keown knew how to draw. Look at the personalities here. Look at this. It's just fantastic. And then you open it up to this gigantic two-page splash of Pitt, you know, basically his Incredible Hulk kind of ripoff. <laughs> I mean, he was so good on the Hulk. If he was going to do his own independent book, it was going to be, you know, the Hulk, but he owns it. 
and I loved Pitt. I thought he was great. I bought all the trading cards. Oh, there was a trading card set, and um, you know, I think there were maybe 50 of these lenticular cards. They were th like three-dimensional and lenticular animated, and they were, I mean, it must have been like 15 frames of animation on one card, and I think there were only 50 of them existing, and I bought I must have purchased like 10 crates of cards until I found one. And it was just like a mail away card and, and Dale sent you one. And it was awesome. <laughs> I was totally a fan. Look at this. So here's the other thing about getting an ash can is you get supplementary material. Um, this is, uh, I think it's an unpublished pit cover. You can see the pencils and then you can see the inks in black and white. And look at that. I think Dale inked himself here. And I used to just go look at how he uses white out and everything. Wow. So neat. Like he, he would like draw and then he'd white out little strands of hair. Thank you, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. My wife just brought me sandwiches. Um, yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. And then here's a, a page from pit number two that was never used. I mean, this is priceless. This is just great. It's like, how could you not use that page? It's terrific. Um, what is this? A uh, sneak peek to the cover to pit number three that was scrapped. He he did this and then he didn't use it and he used this instead. I'm like, what are you nuts? This is a way better cover. That is just awesome. Look at that. Like if this were on a cover today, on a comic book today, you would buy it. You would have to buy it. More unused art. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> little little marker sketch. And another kind of early, uh, unused, unseen piece. Uh, this is why. Look, and, you know, uh, you could order ash cans here. They were $12 each. So when a book, a comic book itself was maybe $2, uh, ash cans were, uh, um, uh, you know, six times as much. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I got lost here because I just realized that this detective's name, this girl, is Bobby Harris. Which is funny. I mean, I'm pretty sure Dale, who uh, worked at uh, Marvel, just decided to combine Bobby Chase, who was his editor on The Hulk, with Bob Harris, who was the EIC of uh, Marvel Comics. Now he is the EIC at DC Comics uh, to create a character in tribute. Um, that's very nice of him. Yeah, so this is really cool. I got a Beavis and Butthead ash can. Uh, <laughs> I don't know when this came out, but I mean, even Beavis and Butthead had an ash can. This is 1995. People were anticipating the next issue of Beavis and Butthead, and so they had to, to do an ash can. Oh, this was a Wizard supplement. So Wizard Magazine, great magazine. They would have little supplementary ash cans. And this is late. I mean, this is 2006, which is very strange. I don't know why uh, these were... Not for resale. Did this come included in, a, in maybe a, a much later issue of Wizard Magazine? I mean, this is, it's it's not, are there extras in the back? Yeah, this isn't a typical ash can here. There isn't a lot of reason. This, this is just like a miniature comic book. Ash can should have junk in the back. They should have junk in the trunk. Uh, here's Cyberfrog number zero, the ash can. Look at this. This is our supplementary material. Our Arthur Adams sketches for Cyberfrog number zero's variant cover. We ended up going with this one, but that's pretty great. And that's pretty great. They were always screaming in the sky. Everyone's always screaming, why me? I mean, we just saw that here. Look at it. Why? Why? Everybody wants to know why. There doesn't have to be a reason. Uh, yeah, and so... Uh, Again, if you wanted to see my work in black and white, this is kind of the way to do it. I was so proud of this book when it when it came out. Look at Shock Roach here. I mean, that still looks pretty cool, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I labored over this. It was just like, I was so like, I was so impressed with what everyone else was doing all the time and I just wanted to do a really good book too. And uh, yeah, I remember, um, uh, one of the editors at Lightning Comics who was publishing Trent saw this book and said, hey, uh, yeah, didn't suck so bad this time, Ethan. I was like, Arr. well, that's kind of a compliment. Uh, yeah, nice sketch of Heather. <laughs> look, I mean, uh, influenced by early uh, J. Scott Campbell, uh, apparently. I mean, look at the size of those eyes and the kind of super long legs. Um, still, she's very femmy. Hair's a little goofy here. 
oh, let's use some white out and just, you know, throw uh, strands of hair everywhere. Sure, why not? Um, but yeah, Cyberfrog number zero ash can. I wish these would come back. I wish these would come back. And, it, you know, uh, if there was any way for me to, you know, um, bring back ash cans in some way, I would really like to do that. I just thought they were so much fun and they really built anticipation for uh, the the book um, that you were working on. Uh, there, I mean, nowadays people just tease what they're doing uh, online, like on Twitter, but I mean, this was just so much better. Like here, here's, here's my work product. Here's an advanced look at like the first, you know, eight or 10 pages of the, of the book that I'm working on right now. Um, just seemed much better and it was much more collectible and fun. And then you get to see stuff like this too. So anyway, ash cans, um, uh, what do you think? Should we do more of them? I mean, would you would you pursue ash cans of uh, of books that you were excited about? Are they collectible still? Let me know in the comments. Like, um, are these giveaways for Kickstarters? Like to do an ash can version of uh, a book that you're doing on Kickstarter? Are are those good prizes, uh, incentives? Um, yeah, I really want to hear what you guys think. Um, so uh, please like this video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Check and see if you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. I'm doing a lot of live chats lately and they're pretty well attended. Thank you very much. I want to thank everyone who um, donates to my Patreon as well. Um, that's very much appreciated. I'd really like to get to the point where I can do... I, I have a goal on my Patreon. Once I get to a certain point, I'm going to produce a fully animated opening. I'm going to take an entire two days off of work and only do uh, this animated opening um, sequence for the uh for every episode it's gonna be great um and i already have it in my mind and everything i just need two days off of work so that's what i'm waiting for um uh yeah so thanks very much and i'll see you again soon bye in the eight c l that's my homeboy watch your back if you're gonna walk alone boy because i